I think that's my rules. So I'll introduce myself. I'm, I'm Jeff Brown. Um, so I'm actually just starting um, my role as Dean of Ag, Ag Sciences. So I'll be uh, the Dean of the academic side of uh, the agriculture school. Uh, Josie Van Lent, still with the college, she's just shifting her focus a little bit and she's gonna be Dean of Agricultural Technology and Applied Research. Uh, and she's also looking after the farm side. So uh, not a whole lot of change in terms of our involvement, just a little bit of restructuring within the organization, but and uh, you'll be meeting Josie a little bit later on. She's gonna be speaking to the uh, Agriculture Technology degree, which is kind of a brand new thing for us. We're just gonna be offering this year. So she'll be able to update you on that. Um, so I think uh, what we'll do first is we'll start with, I'm just gonna introduce uh, our Chair of Ag Sciences and our academic advisor. Uh, following that, uh, I'll give you a brief update on the COVID uh, situation and what we're planning to do for fall de delivery in the School of Agriculture Sciences. Um, and that'll just be really quick, just an over, a broad overview. And then what we'll do is we'll go through and uh, you can meet our program heads for each of the program groups. And they're just going to be introducing themselves and giving you just a very uh, quick overview of anything that might be unique to their program. Um, we'll run through those quickly. Uh, and uh, and then we'll also have uh, Ashley Watt is here. She's in case you're uh, someone who's going to be joining the rodeo club or you're uh, looking at bringing a horse on campus. She'll also introduce herself and uh, and talk about uh, how the equine side of things is going. If that works okay. So maybe to start with, I'll just ask if uh, Tracy Quinton is on the call. Tracy, do you want to introduce yourself and kind of explain what you do as academic chair? Is he here? Yep, I'm on. I'm on here. So uh, my name is Tracy Quinton. I'm the chair of agricultural sciences here at uh, Lakeland College. Um, so I'm typically responsible for um, doing timetabling, dealing with student uh, concerns or issues. So um, hopefully, I don't see a whole bunch of you uh, in my office. Um, uh, but I'm here to support you and help you in any way possible. So. Uh, please feel free to to come by at any time if you're if you have some challenges or issues. Uh, uh, I'm here uh, for that as well. So, um, looking forward to getting to know you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, like uh, Jeff had mentioned, uh, hopefully we can address those uh, this after this evening, and uh, make your stay at Lakeland College the best possible. Great, thanks, Tracy. Uh, I'll turn it over to Alan McMillan now. He's our academic advisor for the School of Agriculture Sciences. Good evening, uh, everybody. I'm Alan McMillan. I am the academic advisor. Uh, my job is to support each and every one of you as much as I can when you hit some walls and either uh, direct you to the supports that we have on campus, whether they are academic supports or personal supports that you may be requiring. Uh, when you start knocking the ball out of the park and you start thinking about turning your diploma into a degree, I can help you with that as well and discuss uh, transfer agreements that we have with the University of Lethbridge, the University of Alberta, and University of Saskatchewan, or maybe even convince you to stay for an extra two years on Lakeland and become one of the first people to get a degree from Lakeland College. Uh, I am really excited to meet all of you as you come onto campus and much like Tracy, I really, I, I hope you, I meet you in a positive setting as opposed into academic trouble setting, which would be in my office as well. Uh, Man, so welcome to Lakeland. Let's make this a great, albeit different year. Okay, so um, just to just to give you a bit of a, a briefing on the overall situation of uh, how we're handling the COVID situation coming into the fall delivery, um, we're we're working with Alberta Health Services uh, very closely in terms of what the current guidelines are, um, and. Uh, Really, I mean, some of those things can change pretty quickly. So we, we will put the caveat in place that of course, if anything changes, uh, we're gonna be really watching those uh, provincial guidelines closely. We're also uh, watching the, the situation in Saskatchewan as well as we are a bi-provincial college. Um, and we're gonna do the best we can. Really, I think that um, the two things that Lakeland, well, the, the thing that Lakeland really is known for is the hands-on competencies that we deliver in our programming. So, uh, we are committed to that. Um, I think it would be very hard thing for us to, um, it'd be hard uh, for us to go to a straight online delivery just to, because of the types of competencies we deliver with our programming. So um, I think as much as possible, we're gonna try to to really take advantage of, uh, you know, how and when we're allowed to be uh, face-to-face -face in that sort of a delivery mode. Um, with that said, 
the guiding principle that we're working under is first and foremost, foremost we're going to be looking after the health and well-being of our students. Um, so that means that, that there might be some trade-offs that we have to make when we come into class in the fall uh, in order to be uh, in person and hands-on. Um, so I just ask you to be receptive to that. Um, the other thing is, of course, uh, it's very uncertain times. I'm sure you've heard this uh, just quite a lot in the last little while. Uh, everybody is uh, kind of uh, adapting and being flexible. Um, so we just ask for your patience and understanding as we kind of go through this process because we're learning at the same time as you you folks are. So, um, so we're really going to try our best. I think that's our biggest commitment to this whole thing is that we're really wanting to do as much as we can uh, in person. So how you would describe our delivery this fall would be uh, a blended delivery. So what we're going to be doing is we're really prioritizing the hands-on competencies. So we'll, we'll be face-to-face -face for things like labs, a student managed farm, um, uh, like discussion classes, if, we're, if we can uh, hit our, our guidelines on that sort of thing. Uh, any of the hands-on competencies, uh, we're really going to be trying to prioritize and make those our face-to-face -face things. Uh, lectures and theory, um, those will be uh, probably a mixture of some online, some in person, depending on the content and the delivery style and the program. So um, we'd like to come and just give you across the board exactly what everybody's doing, but our programs are so varied and diverse and we really deliver them in a lot different way. So I think the best way to do that is just to really go through our different programs and, uh, and kind of uh, identify how, it, how it's looking for every program group and just listen up when your program is being, uh, being spoken about and we can kind of go through, uh, through all of that. Um, I'm just, just before we do that though, um, so how we're going to do the face-to-face, -face, of course, uh, we can't do that just willy-nilly. We're going to still be uh, recognizing health guidelines. So that means that there's, there's going to be daily screening that's going to be happening, uh, uh, social distancing, so the two meter separation where possible, um, a maximum of 50 people in the room. I don't think we're going to really hit that very much because uh, most of our classrooms, if you do the dimensions and you're looking at the two meter a distance between people. Uh, we don't get anywhere close to 50 in most of our classrooms. So, uh, but that is one of the guidelines that we're working under currently. Um, we're going to be looking at barriers and uh, and and uh, barrier ins and partition installation, uh, personal protective equipment, so masks, those sorts of things uh, when we have to be close to each other, uh, and then also really putting a focus on increased hand sanitizer stations and, uh, and increased sanitation um, to try to try to make things as safe as possible. Uh, we're, uh, Tracy will be involved with this as we go on a little bit more. Some of the timetabling is gonna be, it's, he's gonna have his work cut out for him. We have to make some adjustments because what we're gonna try to do, uh, typically at Lakeland, uh, every class will, or in the School of Ag Sciences, every class will start at, um, on the half hour. So it would start from 8.30 to 9.30, for example, 9.30 to 10.30. What you might find this year is that depending on where the classes are situated, we're gonna be looking at adjusting that so that we can stagger those class times. So some classes may be starting at nine, some may be at, at, at 8.30, for example. What that does is it allows us to reduce the amount of traffic in the hallways and some of those highly congested areas. Um, so that's one of the things we're trying to do that can just kind of reduce the density of uh, students in the hallway and that sort of thing. Another thing that might happen is you might, uh, we might try to, as much as possible, uh, try to stick to one room for one cohort for as long as we can, just so we don't have to switch out of rooms uh, and be uh, doing a lot more sanitation as we go. Um, residence is accepting students, so uh, it, it'll be at about half capacity, for, like uh, any of the double occupancy rooms, of course, they're going to single occupancy. Uh, you will be, there will be double occupancy in bathrooms and some increased protocols for sanitation and cleanliness there as well. Um, I think that's all I had. We'll, we'll maybe uh, touch on, there is a prep course that's also available and, and uh, Karen Harris is on the call. She might be able to kind of sneak that in if we get into some calls or if we have some time uh, here a little bit later on. But I think maybe what I'll do right now is I'll, I'll move it to the program heads and they'll just quickly introduce themselves. They'll be kind of the point contact for, uh, um, for how things are, uh, are progressing in each of those program groups. They can give you a quick description of how their program group is looking at uh, adjusting to the new uh, limitations that we're, we're uh, abiding by because of COVID. So, uh, so maybe what we'll do is we'll start with the, the vet techs. So Kim, do you wanna maybe start? Yes, Jeff, sorry, maybe just 
um, after each program had the students can ask questions in the chat room? Actually, I was gonna, um, I'm glad you brought that up. I, did, I forgot to mention it. I would really like to hold off the questions yeah. until after, because we'll just quickly run through all the different program groups. And then what we'll do is we'll just have all the questions at the end. And then that way we can really stay on as long as, as, long as we want to on that side to try and get as many answers as, as possible. So, but I think a lot of the questions might be common to different groups. So I just wanna make sure we get through the different program groups really quickly off the start if we could. So. Yeah, so we'll just start with Kim. So, Jeff, do you want me to do both programs now or, or just VMA? Yes, please. If you, could, if you could just kind of talk about what's common between animal health technology and, and vet medical assistant, and then what the, maybe some of the differences might be. Hi, everyone. I'm Kim Remco, and I'm the program head of the veterinary medical assistant. Um, Elaine Sutterby is our animal health tech uh program head and she wasn't able to come tonight so i teach in the ht program as well so i'm going to cover off both um basically what jeff said is is going to happen in our programs vma specifically we're one of the smaller groups on campus so our plan is definitely because you're learning a lot of the technical skills to, to do that in person with all of the labs the lectures will be a bit of a combination like he said and that will really depend on the instructor's delivery style but for the most part our plan is to try and go a uh, rotation of students in lecture and then take that for the rest of the class or live stream for the rest of the class depending on numbers we may be able to get all in the same classroom and and have our schedule run fairly similarly to what it has been in the past um, animal health technology, on the other hand, is a much bigger group and we have some more specific requirements from the Veterinary Medical Association that we need to go through in the way of competencies that we need to sign off for students. So labs will be in person. It's hard to teach a lot of those technical skills of putting in a catheter, for example, if you can't be there in person. So, we're going to try and do that obviously we're going to have to modify the number of people within a group um and wear protective equipment because lots of the, the core skills you obviously have to be in quite close proximity to each other so we'll have all those those ppes in place so that everybody's safe doing that lectures for those guys as well will be on um a bit of a basis depending on how the instructor wants to run it some of them will be pre-recorded and you do some of it online some of it will be in rotation depending on the number of students that we can fit in each class and the availability that uh we can work out with tracy to, to get into the bigger Why is this not working? so it, it's going to be a change for everybody instructors as well and, and we're all going to work through it together the education itself is going to be the same as it has been in the past. It's not that we're trying to modify any of the skills that you would have had based on the year. It's going to be the same. You'll come out with the same skills that you would have had you have attended five years ago. So that part's not going to change. It's just going to be an adjustment for everybody on the, the delivery style. Great, thanks, Kim. Okay, so we'll just hold the questions till the end. Maybe next we'll run to ag business. Uh, so we'll go with Darla. Hi, uh, I'm a, uh, Darla Stepanek is my name. I'm the program head for ag business. Um, really wanted to echo Kim's comments of where, you know, this is new to us. We did finish off our last semester going online and I th I'm very proud of how we finished off the year. So looking forward to the fall to see how things come in. Um, again, the blended learning that Jeff has been talking about, we'll try to have you in person as much as possible, which likely means having half the class attend the lectures. Maybe if there's four lectures a week, half the class will attend lecture one and lecture three in person. The other half will attend lecture two and lecture four in person. So when you're in the class actually attending, we do a little bit of lecture. We do a lot of hands-on, go through um, different problems together. 
that when we actually have you there, that is definitely what our focus is going to be, is that hands-on sort, of, um, sort of learning. So when you're not in the classroom on, on the days, you will be likely live streaming into that classroom. So you'll get somewhat of the same experience. You'll be in your dorm room, your apartment, wherever you are to actually go through that. Um, we will promise to check in with you throughout the, the sessions and see how it's going. About two or three weeks in, that's something I think AgBiz does really well, where we say what's working and what's not working. And where possible, we'll really work hard to try to, to accommodate that so that we can each class that comes in is unique and we want to make sure that we, we are meeting the needs that you guys have. Um, I've had some questions about things like textbooks and computers. So the textbook list that'll come in, that'll you'll be released to you in that first week of classes. Our bookstore does has, have textbooks, as well as there's usually a pretty abundant, um, you can get a used textbook purchase. I'm not sure what the protocol for that will be this year, but we'll, we'll send some messaging out around that a little bit later on. That's a pretty good way if we make you buy a textbook you will use the textbook that's something that we are very very cognizant of when it comes to a computer um if you've been on the website you'll see we don't say you have to have a computer but with how we're morphing into teaching this year and really the way that the courses are taught it would be very beneficial to have access to to a computer that can be a macbook that can be a laptop that can be a uh, an iPad, that can be almost anything that, that works with our, our systems. So um, probably would find that useful. Again, not necessary because we do have computer labs on campus that you can potentially access. Yeah, I think that's it for AgBiz. Great, thanks Darla. Maybe we'll go to crop technology next. Uh, Kyle, do you wanna talk to crop technology? And you'll probably gag if you went over there right now. Hit that mute button. <laughs> All right, hey everyone, I'm Kyle Kipps. I'm the program head for Crop Technology. Um, I guess one of the things I'll start out with saying that I think we could take some, a real advantage of in this program is spending time out in the fields in the fall before freeze up and, and using our living lab space for, um, for our lab labs but also in our lectures where it's appropriate too and of course that helps a lot when you're trying to maintain social distance when you have a whole quarter to do it in not that we would but uh, we can use that to our advantage um, otherwise I think the delivery is going to depend on the course and depend on the instructor like others have mentioned but um, what you can expect I think from some instructors again like Darla said with that blended model is um, time face to face for some students while the other students would be able to view that lecture remotely. Um, there could also be delivery models from other courses where you have resources or materials to review on your own time like YouTube videos or um, PowerPoints and then when you come in the classroom we're working through a concept or we're having a discussion about that so it's going to depend on the material that we're, we're trying to cover and, um, and the instructor. As far as labs go, and most most courses, especially in the first year, are going to have labs. They um, they would be face to face, so that experience will be the same. And and like Kim said, the competencies and the skills that you leave with are going to be the same as any other year. We're just going to try and do it differently, and maybe even better than we've done it in the past. So we're looking at this as a, an opportunity. Great, thanks, Kyle. Uh, Bevan Hamilton and for animal science technology livestock programming. Perfect. Thanks, Jess. Um, yeah, I'm seeing a lot more second years on here than we anticipated. So I'll probably speak to both years uh, before we're done here. But um, animal science technology. So I'm the program head for that. And I will be speaking to all four majors. So livestock, beef, dairy and equine. They'll all be running very similar with the exception of equine. We're gonna get you guys out in the barn as much as possible and out on the horses. So uh, we're gonna, yeah, Ron and Matt will know more about that when you arrive in the fall, but uh, that's business as usual as of right now. So the rest of you and all the first years, uh, we're gonna really push the hands-on labs. Uh, so in person for labs, and then every lecture is gonna be different, but as everyone else has said, we will be splitting you guys up and getting you in class when discussion and, and hands-on is necessary. 
if you're not learning anything <laughs> hands-on in class that day and it's safer to have you guys in your dorm room, that's probably what some of us instructors are going to do. So it will be a blended model of both, uh, but a lot of discussion-based classes and labs will for sure be in person. And just like every other group, you'll probably be split up into groups and rotate through lectures. So um, we'll have a breakdown of each course once you get back in the fall for you to be a, yeah, kind of a roadmap of what's expected in each course. For the second years, um, I'm not gonna make any promises right now, but I would say that SMF is gonna be our focus to keep in person as much as possible. So uh, for the first years, we're gonna try and get you guys to meet each other, get that college experience. For the second years, we know that you already know each other. So if we can get you guys in SMF and make that run as smoothly as possible and really focus on labs and, and SMF for you, then that's what we're gonna do. So um, not to say that your lectures won't be in person just like, the first year's approach, but we are going to focus on that that SMF because I, I think that's where where we shine and at the college and, and, and in hands-on. So we're going to try and preserve that as a group for you and make it work. So if you don't have anything else other than that, I would just say that your um, your item list that you were sent or your supply list have stayed the same. Add some masks to that and we should be good to go because you will need those when we're in the barn because we can't necessarily social distance on some of the equipment. So um, add some, some masks, more than one, because you should change them like your underwear. If you're not doing that, it's not helpful. So yeah, add a couple and we'll go from there and hopefully we'll see you in the fall. Thanks, Bevan. <laughs> So it's a really good point about the, the personal protective equipment. I think that's a, a really big point. I think that that's how we're gonna protect these hands-on learning opportunities is by being able to, to still adhere to the guidelines that Alberta Health Services is putting out. So it's gonna be really important to, to cooperate with your instructors on uh, on what they're uh, setting out for guidelines. So next, I think we'll we'll go to, uh, to Josie next. So this is kind of a, um, a preview, and I'm sure some are, have been interested in, in the applied or in the uh, in the ag technology degree that we're going to be offering. This is a first for Lakeland, and this has been a, a real pet project for for Josie. She's been working on this for the last little while. So I thought we'd maybe open it up to have her give a brief update of uh, kind of how that's going and how that's going to look for this year. So go ahead, Josie. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Jeff. Well, first of all, um, welcome back to all the second years and. Uh, and uh, yeah, and a special welcome to the first years that are joining Lakeland. Um, we are known as everybody, uh, all, all the colleagues that have talked, talked so far for our hands-on learning and um, really pleased that we're able to stay open this fall and continue to offer that to all of you. Um, that's what we're known for and I think what we do really well. So I think you'll see that that's not going to change much. Um, certainly some of the ways that we have to uh, um, Mitigate COVID will be part of that now, but uh, I think you'll find your experience just as robust as it, as it would be otherwise. So welcome everybody. Um, so as just said, I've been working on a degree. It'll be the first degree that we offer. Um, just for some clarification, it is a full degree. Um, it has been referred to as an applied degree, but it's actually a full degree in agriculture sciences. Uh, it's a degree in ag technology. Um, so what it is, is to enter the degree, there's a couple of different routes. Uh, you can enter with a diploma in animal science or uh, crop technology, and we're working on the egg business piece right now to make sure there's full, I am with CAQC, make sure that we're fully able to transfer um, full credits from our egg business program as well. Um, also, uh, we will recognize prior learning. So degrees and uh, diplomas from other institutions um, will also potentially be recognized and be able to enter the diploma. Um, so I'm just working on the, our, the recognizing prior learning piece with uh, advanced education too, right, as well. Um, yeah, so once you've got your diploma, you're welcome to enter the degree. The focus is ag technology. There are two streams. There's an animal science stream and a crop technology stream. Um, it's not solely ag technology, that is the focus and the jobs, there's, uh, we did an extensive industry survey and we know there's a ton of jobs out there that are focused around ag technology. But what we're aiming for is that integrator. So it's gonna be very important, for example, on the crop side to have some crop management experience, agronomy experience and learning. And uh, on the animal side, the animal husbandry and management piece is important. 
and then um, where where are these jobs where you'll fit into industry is that integration between that and technology and that seems to be where there's a large job demand right now so um, unfortunately we're not able to start the degree in the fall um, we're aiming for January of 2020 uh, we're still working with CAQC with basically which is the government uh, working through some pieces around the curriculum and the practicum and uh, everything, including our policies and procedures. Um, so we're back and forth with them. Literally right now, I'm back and forth with them every, seems like every second day. Uh, also with the COVID circumstances, we thought maybe it'd be best to wait since this is the first year that we're going to be offering the degree. We are looking at a January 2020 start date. Um, so we'll start in January of 2020. Uh, if you if you graduate with a diploma and you take two or three years of work, you're welcome to come back and apply for the degree. So um, this isn't you don't have. I've had this question several times in the last uh, four months. You don't have to enter the degree right after your diploma. You can go out and work and then come back and enter. Um, in some cases, there's some interest from industry and in paying to have people come back for the degree. So people that are already in the job, but they want them to have more of a technology focus. So yeah, just a little bit about that. I can certainly answer a lot more questions or I'm sure it's, uh, some of you aren't quite ready for this. So um, my email's available and uh, yeah, I can also share my contact information and Alan's as well for more information. Thanks, Jeff. Great, thanks, Josie. Okay, so, um... The other side that we wanted to kind of uh, touch on tonight was the the club side. Uh, club activity is going to be really uh, dependent on which club it is and, and what the activities are in each club. Uh, one of the ones that we thought we would address in this webinar is the rodeo club and of course all, um, uh, the bring your horse to campus <laughs> because obviously there's implications with our equine center and so I thought I'd invite Ashley Watt who is our uh, rodeo and equine coordinator onto the call. And uh, she can maybe just introduce herself. She'll be the, the point of contact for anyone who's bringing a horse on campus. And uh, she can maybe uh, talk a little bit about what plans are for the fall um, for rodeo and, uh, and for equine. Ashley, are you on the phone? Yep, thanks, Jeff. So, hi everyone, my name is Ashley Watt. I'm the manager of equine and rodeo operations. Um, looks like right now, um, we have about 25 applications in and a few more keep trickling in, so students are welcome to bring their horses. The Equine Centre has been closed all summer for the public to keep it a clean slate for the fall whenever, when you guys are all back. So um, when it comes to the rodeo team, we will be in the arena for practices. How they're going to look is a little uncertain at this point of how we'll manage to adhere to all of those guidelines. Um, but just know that for the fall, we will be able to practice. As far as with the College Rodeo Association, um, we're still unsure on how rodeos will look this fall. So like everything, we're kind of, everything changes on a weekly basis. So we'll just kind of keep up with that. Um, lots of plans for the spring though. So hopefully we can be back in the rodeo arena for then. So yeah, if anyone, uh, there's still space available, if anyone is interested in bringing your horse to the campus, um, applications are available online and I can put my contact information as well in the chat. So if anyone has any questions uh, in regards to horse boarding or the rodeo club or rodeo team, uh, be sure to get a hold of me. Okay, great, thanks Ashley. Okay, so I think what we'll do now, this is where it's gonna get a little bit wild for us. <laughs> We're hoping all this works. <laughs> so please be patient if we've, if we've missed your question. I think that Alan, great idea, stick in your, uh, your email address on, in the chat box there if there's anybody who uh, is wanting to send your question that way if you don't get it answered here on the webinar. We have quite a few participants, so uh, there's a chance that we aren't gonna be able to get to everything, but we'll sure try as best we can. So. Um, so I think what we'll do, if you can, you should have the chat box at the very bottom of your Zoom screen. Uh, if you want to just make sure you message to everyone. Uh, if, you're, if, you're mess, if your question is private in nature, I'd, I'd encourage you to, uh, uh, to send it to an email or to message one of us privately uh, with, with your contact information if you can, and then we can, we can get back to you on that um, so we don't have to address it in the public forum. But, um, I guess we'll just start off. So maybe I'll just go to the... Uh, I have a little Google document here. So 
The first one that we have is what sort of computer do I need to have for classes? iPad, laptop, MacBook? Um, <laughs> it's a great question. Uh, is there any of the instructors who want to jump in on this one? Is there really any problems with any different type of computer? I think as long as you've got uh, internet access and are able to, um, uh, I don't know if there's any compatibility issues for D2L or any of that sort of thing that we would have to worry about really on that side. So I assume it's your, your, your preference, but I might be wrong on that. Correct me if I'm wrong instructors on that one. So from an egg biz perspective, you're exactly right. They all basically function the same. So you want to make sure you have one that works um, with the Microsoft Office package, because that's what we would typically use. We would use Word, we would use Excel. Um, we do do Google Docs quite frequently and do some sharing that way, as well as when you apply at Lakeland, you get a, or accepted, you get a Microsoft email address. So there is some sharing and stuff like that that will take place within there. So yeah, make sure it's a computer that, yeah, for the most part, they all work quite the same. I know some, like a Chromebook, might have challenges with being able to print and things like that. So make sure it gets good access onto, uh, like in allowing you good online access onto the internet and being able to attend uh, meetings in Zoom. So make sure it has a good camera. Um, can make a big difference if it has a good microphone so that when we have you in the classroom, if we're going to be in Zoom, um, Zoom is the capability to break us out into groups of, I think, eight to ten. So when you do that, you'll be interacting with your classmates on that level and in kind of like a little chat room is what that's going to look like. So. And don't buy the Microsoft Office package, like so the Excel and Word, with your email address, you get access to that for free. For as long as you're a Lakeland student. So a lot of students don't know that. And they have it for MacBooks or for regular um, laptops. Great, that's perfect. Thanks, Darla. Okay, uh, second question is for AHT specifically. So Kim, uh, will an Apple Watch be sufficient to meet requirements for AHT? So I think the question is on whether or not uh, a computer would be needed, I would, I would think. Sorry, <laughs> had to get my mute button. So can the Apple Watch download with our D2L system? No, um, sorry, to not sorry to interrupt, Kim. On the supply list for AHT, it says every student needs a watch. So oh. this, this one student is just wondering if an Apple Watch would be sufficient for that. Not as a computer replacement, literally just for the watch part. Okay, the watch is really when we're doing physical exams and you guys are recording heart rates and respiration rates. So honestly, a $10 watch from the pharmacy that has a second hand is all you need. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Okay. But if, uh, but if, they, sorry, but if they already own it, Kim, would it work? Does, I don't know much about an Apple Watch. Does it Me have either. a second hand or it's all digital? Uh, Brianna Elder is nodding her head. Yes, it has a second hand. Is that correct, Brianna? Great. Okay. Is there any situation? Uh, the only thing I can think of is if there's any situation where you're testing using those, uh, whether that would be allowed for integrity reasons, that sort of thing. Yeah, if it's in a test environment, we supply it. So you wouldn't have to worry about that. But if it's in a lab setting where you guys are just using it, you're good to go with. As long as it has a second hand, you're set. Okay, great. Uh, next question is for Kyle. So crop technology, uh, question is that in-person classes will be in, co in continuation or in odd and even days, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, together or alternate days? Did you get I that now? Yeah, I couldn't answer that definitively right now. It's gonna depend on what timetables look like in the fall, but I think probably what you're maybe asking is how you could structure your week or if you could condense it to one end or the other. And I think you could plan to, um, or you need to make yourself available for the Monday to Friday period, if that kind of answers the question. Um, and I think you'll have classes and activities, labs spread throughout the week. Tracy might have more to add to that. I don't know what he's been cooking up for plans, but, uh, but that would be my answer. No, I, I would uh, add that I would, at this stage plan for a Monday through Friday um, with the amount of labs, particularly with 
first years and we're gonna we're trying to run all of our labs face to face you'll you'll be on campus um, so you might as well plan to be on campus at this stage and it will be the lectures that may be alternating and and maybe not again depending on the instructors so at this time I think you just plan to be on campus and and plan on on that face-to-face -face contact Okay, um, next question. Uh, it's from an AHT student, but uh, this has actually come up a little bit. Uh, so from those who are immunocompromised, am I able to spend my first semester doing it online and doing labs at a verified vet office? Uh, more than willing to attend second semester, uh, just concerned about outbreak and the pandemic. So it kind of speaks a little bit and could be general across a lot of programs. Uh, if, if you're not comfortable coming to campus, um, I think what we need to do is we deal with those on an individual basis. So uh, it depends on what program you're on, whether you're gonna be able to accomplish all of those competencies. Um, and it also depends on what kind of resources uh, you have on the, on, uh, you know, back home to be able to accomplish them uh, is probably the best answer for that. So um, we certainly don't wanna exclude you if, if there is a way to do it that uh, can adequately uh, demonstrate competency in those areas. I think we're willing to work with you this year. Uh, it's just there is a reality there with, with some of the programming that there's uh, requirements for, uh, for competencies. I don't know if I answered that well enough, Kim, or anything you wanted to add? I think that's very legitimate. If, if coming to campus is your safety is the number one concern, I think there's ways that we can work around that. I think it'll just be a matter of what skills do you have to get covered off and then us potentially chatting with the clinic that you would be working in combination with to have that discussion to ensure that all of those could be covered off with their supervision or videotaping submitted or they're going to have to have some say in that too. So I think we can work on that individually for sure. I, I would kind of add to that that it is, uh, it, there will be a certain responsibility for students that are making that decision to try to uh, source some of those, uh, um, those resources on their own. So I, I definitely don't want the message to be that that's going to be the easy way to accomplish a lot of these tasks. I think that it's probably going to be a lot more difficult to go that way. But I think it can be done, and certainly that would be a priority if uh, if we can uh, kind of respect that um, with those students that are immunocompromised. So hopefully that answers that question. I would suggest if you're in that situation, uh, please send uh, Alan McMillan an an email with the program that you're in, and we can start working through some of these uh, these uh, uh, solutions with the program heads. Okay, next question maybe for Danielle White, who is. Uh, is a recruitment specialist. Can I bring a dog to campus? Uh, so I would assume that this it, it probably is some. It makes a difference whether you're staying in residency or whether you're uh, you're in town, right? So <laughs> I I had added to that one a reply in writing, Jeff. The okay. only animals dogs that stay on campus are if they qualify to be in the stock dog club and they should contact Brianne Bellwood for that and I put her email address on there because there is a certain capacity to how many dogs can actually live on campus. Yeah. Thanks Kim. Okay next question. Um, let's see oh okay this is a great question Kevin with a B. <laughs> How many times a week on average would would be strictly online for animal science first year? So Bevan, maybe if you could answer that question. So in this, this could be a little bit, um, this kind of goes back, there are some programs that are going completely online and uh, just having people coming back every, every once in a while through the semester. Uh, but Bevan, if you want to maybe just answer in your estimation, how many times a week you'd be strictly online for animal science or would you oh, be sure. going... The class every for day. first years in your five classes there will be four labs a week you will be in person for those labs with the majority of them um, the lectures I would suggest that in each course if you have three lectures a week you'll be in person for at least one of them um, say communications there's a hundred students in there so if we split you in three it takes us three classes to get you guys all through the in-person part so you would learn two online and one in person. Second years, I know there's some questions coming up. I see Mark Norenberg's question. 
Same thing, Mark. Your labs will be in person. SMF will be in person. Your other four lectures, we're going to get you in person as much as we possibly can. There's some smaller groups in that, the way that we've split out the second year ASTs. Uh, but we, at this point, we can't guarantee anything until we see what Alberta Health Services does and what COVID does in the next couple months. So I don't want to promise anything to you guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is still Kevin with a B. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, next question is a specific second year AHT, uh, and this is a, so a student returning. Are we able to still do the labs we missed or how is that going to work for second year? So this would be in response to everybody going home early uh, for online. So some of those labs that they missed, uh, is there gonna be any way to make those up? Yeah, I, I actually responded to that one by typing too, but the, we have chatted about that and Eliminating that content is not an option. So we have been working on ways to um, infiltrate it into second year into the schedule of current labs that you guys are going to be doing. So you, it will absolutely get covered off before the end of second year. Okay, uh, next question is how are you going to account for attendance record uh, Lakeland keeps for classes? So. Um, I can maybe speak a little bit to this one just in general. Uh, so the attendance policy is set um, by by the Ag School, and I would suggest that uh, this is going to be a discussion that's going to happen a little bit closer to when we get to, to classes. Um, I think that our number one priority is the safety and well-being of students. We're also trying to um, trying to really um, prioritize the hands-on learning, uh, but we might have to look at how we how we do things, and I think. Those attendance policies and everything will be uh, will be set out for you by your instructor uh, at the start of class. Uh, so we're going to be having discussions on how we're going to handle all that sort of thing as we go in. Uh, I mean, still, I think it's it's important to note attendance is a very good indicator of success, especially in hands-on programs like Lakeland. It's not like a like a university where you're you uh, can kind of skip classes all semester. You may have heard stories people people talking they skip classes just study for the exam and they pass the course. Uh, with Lakeland, a lot of the times the marks are embedded throughout the semester, so you really it, attendance is really important to success. Um, so, uh, but that said, of course, the typical 20% attendance rule that we have been practicing, uh, we'll have to look at for this year in a very different situation with online uh, learners on that side. So, is that fair? Anything to add from anyone? Okay, we'll move on to the next one. How is it decided who will be able to stay in residence and when will we know? Uh, Danielle, do you wanna cover this one? Yeah, Jeff, actually for anyone who has residence questions, I would highly encourage you to email residents specifically because they are a big moving target in what they are dealing with at the moment and all the social distancing that is happening and um, how they are coordinating all their rooms. And I know that they have been working hard with that and things are changing daily for them. So their email addresses are on the website and I will put them up in the chat as well for both Lloyd and Vermillion. Obviously everyone here is Vermillion, but uh, just in case anyone is commuting between those two. Great, thank you. Okay, next one is uh, when are we supposed to move back to campus? When do classes start? Orientation day is online. Danielle, do you wanna talk about when move-in would be for residents? Uh, classes are the 28th, correct? Uh, 31st is the first day of orientation. Yeah, sorry, it's a weird year for August 31st. And uh, that will be done online. And move-in day is typically the Thursday, Friday beforehand, depending on your last name. But again, once you get confirmation that you're moving into residence, they will be emailing you what those dates specifically are. Um, but yeah, again, I will... Sorry, I was just in the process of putting up the email address, so I'll get that one, if that answers that. Yeah, yeah, and, and orientation day, uh, yeah, typically we would start with a, a big uh, session in, in the Alumni Hall Theater. Uh, this year we're looking at, at some sort of a, an online format, so it'll, it'll likely be a Zoom, just because obviously we won't be able to fit everybody into one room, and then we'll break off into different program uh, uh, video conferences. So that's how uh, the orientation day will look like. Um, you know, on the first day of classes. Uh, do you know if out of province students need to quarantine 14 days uh, prior to starting school? Now, I think that's, 
I don't know that there is a interprovincial quarantine rule right now. Uh, Danielle, have you been aware of any of that? Not interprovincially, just international um, yeah. at the moment is the two week quarantine on. So if you're coming from Manitoba, Saskatchewan, BC, you are okay. Anywhere else, we have a lot of students from everywhere. So, yeah, I mean, check your temperature, be reasonable, take in the considerations that are announced by um, Alberta Health and everyone else. But yeah, no, no quarantine. Mm -hmm. You bet. Okay, uh, who will be providing PPE? I expect there will be shortage of supplies. Also, uh, what about additional data required for online learning? So um, we there will be an updated supplies list that, that comes out. Um, in terms of, uh, I don't believe that the college is supplying masks, um, but I could be wrong on that. Danielle, have you heard anything more on that front? Have we decided on that, how that's all gonna go? I have not, but again, that will probably be under, like you mentioned, the supply list if that changes, as well as just those updates um, as we are going. I know that they've been talking about that process, so I'm sure there's more to come on that. There's, there's usually how this works is there'll be a discussion with the program teams in terms of how the delivery is going to look. And if there's a requirement for, uh, for a significant amount of PPE, that typically gets added into uh, into your uh, your your supplies list, your additional uh, cost on on tuition. So, um, so we'll be talking about that shortly, and I think that you'll be updated on that when we talk about supply list uh, before you take the classes. Um, so that's something. In terms of the additional data required for online learning, um, that one's a real a real tough one. I think that it's obviously it's really uh, we realize there's extra cost for those that are using their own uh, their own Wi-Fi, those sorts of things. Uh, there may be their cellular data. Um, our approach to this has always been that um, if you're if you are um, struggling to that, we do have Wi-Fi on campus, so you can be uh, using uh, the on-campus Wi-Fi uh, computer labs and facilities as well um, as as space allows on that side. So uh, even even in the last one when everybody went to an online format, we did leave uh, computer labs open for students that didn't have internet access. So I think if that's a concern, um, you just need to be uh, talking to IT and student services. And, and uh, you know, it might not be from the comfort of your own home, but I think that um, we will have facilities that would be opened up so that you can get your stuff uh, done on that side. Um, it does tie into the, the question about um, is online cheaper? And I think that that's something that maybe is important to address uh, while we're here. Um, so it's important to realize, I think that right now, obviously we're in a pretty tough, fiscal environment with uh, post-secondary getting quite significant cuts. Uh, our costs have already, we were just talking to our facilities uh, manager today, and our costs are significantly up. Uh, number one in that um, we have to install barriers, sanitation stations, all of these extra protocols, uh, sanitation and cleaning. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we're also looking at smaller groups and increased costs on that side. So, um, so this this definitely isn't something that Lakeland would like to have either. Obviously, we'd like the ideal situation to be able to, be, to deliver our courses as we normally would. Um, but uh, so that's the reason why I think that sometimes when you look at it from a student's experience perspective, you may think that online should be cheaper. Um, we're really looking at delivering the curriculum and the, and the competencies that you need for your credential. And that's the product that we're trying to supply. So uh, we're being thrown a few obstacles here that we're trying to adjust to. And uh, the biggest commitment we have to that side is we're gonna do the best we can uh, to get those competencies delivered in the, in the best way possible. So hopefully that answers that question. Okay, so from my understanding, second year for SMF for crop tech, uh, nothing is really changing, just increased PPE. Kyle, do you wanna to talk to that? Um, yeah, <clears throat> I guess we probably couldn't say that nothing's changing because it'll be different, but, uh, in terms of the experiences that you'll have as, as students in SMF, you, you're going to get the same thing out of it, uh, and probably reflective of the world that we're moving into where we're doing a lot more things remotely, like your team meetings. Maybe you don't physically meet in the SMF office. Maybe you use zoom to have those weekly meetings with your team. But as far as the things going on um, outside, if you're if you're moving grain, maybe you are able to do that and still be six feet away from another person. 
if you're in the combine, you're going to be a little closer if you're partnered up with somebody, but we can get around that with, like you said, some, some PPE. So I think you can count on still having a good experience and you're still going to have the responsibility uh, as students. So you're going to have that ownership and make all those decisions. So in that regard, I think um, nothing's changing. Okay, great. Um, I'll maybe just answer one question. It's a little bit further down on the list. Uh, Gen Ag certificate. Um, so uh, they weren't sure what was being asked. Just so that you're aware, uh, so the Gen Ag certificate is, it, depending on whether you're in the animal science um, uh, specialization of the livestock Gen Ag or the crop tech Gen Ag, um, the, the Gen Ag certificate for livestock is really the first year of animal science technology. So that'll fall in line with just exactly what Bevan was uh, talking about. Uh, if you're in, in gen general agriculture crop technology, uh, then it would be the first year of the crop technology program. So uh, it would be a little bit more in line with how, uh, how Kyle was talking. So hopefully that answers the question uh, about Gen Ag on that side. I didn't specifically address it because it is kind of rolled into some of those program groups, but, but it's a good question. I'm glad it was brought up. Um, what is offered for financial support, such as loans or grants? So this kind of goes into financial supports. Uh, Danielle, do you want to maybe speak to this a little bit? I know the federal government had some changes with the uh, with the student loans program in terms of grants. It did. And actually, we just had a webinar with student services and financial aid, and it was so full that um, we are going to have another one on this coming Tuesday. And it will be again recorded and posted for students that um, are able or we understand you want, might be working. And so I did also post financial aids email in here. Lindsay's been very busy with that, which is good. And uh, she's a lot more up to date on what all of the changes are for financial aid and student loans. So please, 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 if you have those questions, either tune in Tuesday or um, I did put it in the chat here, her email address. Um, so please use that. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so, one of the next ones uh, is, what will we go to next here? Actually, we'll go to an ag business question. Uh, for ag business, uh, how many, what's, you know, how many uh, in-person classes versus online? So Darla, if you wanna maybe take that one. How much online as opposed to in-person classes for ag sure. business? Sure, so again, um, in the second year in your labs, like your labs will be in person. So it depends what, what um, stream that you're in, whether you're in the crop, the livestock or the marketing stream. So um, those ones, as well as your student managed enterprise class, your case studies and business analysis. So a significant portion of that will be in person. And again, just as we said, with the lectures probably taking place with half of the students in there, it's a little tricky for egg biz because it all depends on how many double diploma students we end up in there. The double diploma students come and they take about half of their classes with the first years and half with the second. So we'll be working with student numbers on that and, and seeing where that goes. Our goal again is to get as much face-to-face -face time as we can safely and responsibly with you because that's, that's the discussion classes that, that, that key learning takes place in. Great, so we'll go to maybe AST next. Uh, Bevan, in regards to our schedules, do we know how many days we'll actually have to be on campus for classes? Just trying to figure out renting in town. Yeah, so as I said before, in first year, you'll have four labs a week. So four of the five days, they might be, they're not generally doubled up on a day, but I can't guarantee that. So I would say campus daily um, based on coming to one lecture of, or a, a couple lectures and your labs. So I, yeah, if that helps, most, mo every week you will be in person in some way, shape or form, um, hopefully daily. And that's, that's our plan because we'd really want to give you that experience. Uh, and then we'll see how, how this all progresses. But that would be my best suggestion for now. So doing it remotely is going to be a little bit complicated. Okay, yeah. And there's uh, just a follow-up question to that. Uh, another student is asking if there's a way to take the online por portion remotely and possibly do practical portion at a later date or following year. Um, so... I would just say to those questions, file those to Alan McMillan. His email is in the chat, uh, and we'll look at those on a case-by-case -case basis. We're really hoping to keep it all in person and online, being that you're in Vermilion, but 
uh, depending on the case and how we have to approach that, we will look into that. So please forward those to Alan and then we'll go from there. Okay, great. Uh, how do we get our first year books? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> a little different process this year. <laughs> Um, I wonder if we should. Uh, I wonder if we should go to each of the program heads on that side. I'm not sure which program specifically this is talking uh, about, but um, do each of the program heads want to just jump in and and talk about how that might be done, or um, is that yet to, to be figured out? Sorry, Jeff. I can talk to HT and VMA for all of the programs. I would say the bookstore has the number of copies that we need, hard copies. Um, for our two programs, some of those books are available in ebooks. Some of them you can purchase on Amazon. So once the class list has the itemized books, then really that's your discretion as to how you get it. If you're going to come on campus, bookstore is probably the most convenient. But if you want to order them before you get to campus, you can certainly do that through places like Amazon for everything that's on our list. Okay. Any other program groups want to discuss that or? I would say for AST, please don't order before you come to campus. Uh, we have some instructors that are changing so that textbooks may change. They probably won't, uh, but just hold off and the bookstore will have a process of getting books to you. So if you are online and we have to order them through there, the bookstore does have those orders already. So just hold tight and you will be told your textbooks on the first day. Just to add in about the bookstore in general, um, I know they are closed right now, hopefully opening here in August, um, and I will put their email addresses in the chat here as well to order because I know um, Mel and them are open to ordering online via email, phone, that sort of thing, and then hopefully that can help you a little bit with that. Great, thank you. Uh, just to say for crops, uh, go to your first class, find out what you need, and then they'll be available available in the bookstore. So in Egg, there's again, same thing, but also um, if you haven't downloaded the Lakeland College app, download the Lakeland app. It'll have updates on things that are going on. It's how the Students Association will reach out to you um, to let you know of events that are going on because the Students Association is working very hard to try to figure out how to get you guys engaged and help you experience what is the amazing Lakeland culture. So. Um, download that app. On there, there'll be lots of students trying to sell used textbooks. So again, make sure, don't just buy a used textbook. You, you should probably wait till you get to, again, get to your first day of classes. Jeff, my understanding is that the um, course outlines are going to be loaded up in a, in a format on the website that the students can actually access, and those textbooks should be listed in there, shouldn't they? Yeah, I think I think though that uh, it's still probably a good idea to to wait for the Check first class off. just to just to the point yeah. about um, you know classes changing and of course delivery is changing as well, right? So absolutely, I really do think that's probably the best strategy in most cases, okay. rather than loading up on books and then finding out uh, once you get to class yeah. that you're not going to be needing that one. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. Can you interject here for a second, please, Jeff. Because sure. I want to really reinforce something that Darla just mentioned there about the My Lakeland account um, and the importance for all incoming students to regularly access their My Lakeland account and check their, their emails. Um, there's going to be a ton of information as things change and the primary way that communication is going to occur from the college to potential students or to students is going to be to, to those two avenues. Um, I know last year we had people coming on campus that had never opened up their My Lakeland account uh, starting on the first day. Uh, Please, 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 all of you, download the app, access it uh, on, a, on a couple every couple days uh, when your when timetables are done and you are enrolled in your class. Your timetables will be rolled out onto that. It is a it is a, a fountain of information. Please take advantage of that information that the college provides you in that format. Great, thank you. Uh, probably a big question on a lot of people's mind and kind of segues from the My Lakeland. Uh, Tracy, do you want to take this one? Just wondering uh, when they can expect to see their actual schedule of classes. So this would probably be best answered by the chair. It's a million dollar question. Um, so so schedules were done before students left this first go round. But due to the changes right now, we're kind of waiting to see what student numbers are looking like. Um, 
So I don't actually have a definite answer for you what that's going to look like. I will be meeting with uh, the other schools, uh, so environmental science and human uh, services, uh, to work around the alternate start times and that, that type of stuff. So um, it's a work in progress as it now stands. I'm hoping there's not a huge change, just some time changes like an 8.30 class now starting at nine o'clock. Or, and you may be going to class a little later as well. We tried, usually tried to end by 4.30. Um, for some of you, it was 5.30. So uh, we may see some extended hours just by a half hour or so with the stagger start times. Um, but it'll probably be, to be quite honest, it'll be sometime in August when you'll see those set uh, timetables laid out, so. Uh, it's probably not what you want to hear, and that was not my goal, um, but that's kind of the hand we've been dealt at this point. So that's where we're at. Okay, a uh, specific question around uh, animal science technology equine first year. How much riding class will be going this year? Um, smaller group sizes, social distancing, disinfection. Uh, Bevan, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, for sure. We. Um, as of right now, there we're planning on three sections for the equine students. So that would put you in groups of 12 for sure, which will give you an arena to uh, spread out. We'll look at disinfection measures as we see what we need to do from Alberta Health Services. So there will be, I don't think riding lessons or classes will change uh, significantly. Uh, those are smaller classes and we should be able to run those as Plan. So what we told you at Open House should be what we do, but um, yeah, that was, I guess, the start of the end was, was that weekend. So yeah. Okay, next question. It'll be a really quick one. Uh, general agriculture students, there's a question about who they contact to choose between animal or crop sections. Uh, so the animal or, or crop uh, general agriculture program. I'd suggest that you contact uh, Alan McMillan, who's our academic advisor, and he can help you out with that selection on that side. Um, uh, will there be a way to access a recording of this webinar? Uh, absolutely. There, this It's going to be posted on the Lakeland College website. So um, there, if you go into, um, at the very top, you can actually go into the, it'll give you, you COVID updates. And it'll there'll be a whole bunch of tiles that that come up, and part of it is is webinars. Um, so uh, the, all the webinars that have happened will be listed, and it might not be up tomorrow, but it'll be up uh, reg relatively shortly in terms of uh, in terms of the webinar schedule. So so just to that point, I do realize we're at eight eight oh five. We'll keep going as long as people can. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll respect that if instructors have to have to. Uh, head somewhere else, that's fine. We can try to answer the questions as best as possible, but we'll stay on as long as there's interest in, in hitting a few more of these uh, questions. So, um, I learned better in class, AHT first year, is that possible? Uh, Kim, do you wanna to speak to that point? <laughs> and I could maybe add some points to that too as well, if you'd like. Yeah, I, I think some of it will depend on um, how many people we can fit in the classroom. Right now, lectures with the whole group of 72 we don't have a room big enough to socially distance with the two meters and 72 people so having everybody in lecture is not going to be an option doing it on a rotational basis with maybe a third of the class and then they come specific days might be an option i hear you that it would be nice for everybody just to be there it's not going to be that simple. So really it will depend on what the instructor feels is the best to deliver that information as to whether that will be blended or some of it will be live streamed to the rest of the group or more of the self-directed online learning. It's not going to be a cut and dried cookie cutter model across the board. Okay, great, sounds good. I think that the, the big thing um, to remember I mean, it's not an ideal situation. Uh, we realize that uh, the face-to-face -face delivery is, that's how we prefer to deliver lots of our courses. Um, I think that the whole idea behind this is that we can't deliver the whole program face-to-face. Uh, -face. 
Um, so I would really encourage anyone who struggles with online learning really to reach out to student services and make sure that you're getting you're getting assistance on that side. That's uh, Alan McMillan is the other one here. Karen Harris, you're on the call as well. Um, and we have lots of resources within the college. It's another reason for, uh, for being uh, at campus while you're taking this blended delivery is that we realize there's gonna be uh, probably a higher number of students that are struggling with some of the content. Um, so we'd really like you to encourage you to, uh, to reach out for supports if you are struggling with this learning model and uh, we'll help you adjust on that side. Unfortunately, just with the limitations, it's gonna be impossible to do everything face-to-face, -face, but, um, but we can sure put supports in there and help you to, um, to adapt uh, to this style as much as possible. Is that fair? Anything you wanna add, Karen or, or Alan? Nope, I think that's entirely fair. Um, I, I, and there's a number of questions here, Jeff. You know, should I be on campus? Should I commute? What's what's what are my options? Um, I would encourage students to to involve themselves as fully in campus life as we are going to be able to in in this program. Um, I would encourage you to live in residence. I would encourage you to be active in the clubs that are we're going to be able to run. I would encourage you to be on campus so that when your labs are there, you're, you're right on campus or, or, or in Vermillion. It's, it's when you are present physically and mentally on campus, I just think you're setting yourself up for far greater success. When you do run into troubles, when you have that, when you are on campus, whether you're living in res or an apartment in town, you have just a little bit easier access to instructors and professors for help or the learning supports, the other supports that we have on campus, whether they're academic supports or whether they're personal supports. Um, so if you're, if you're wavering to the students that are kind of, what should I do? If you're wavering between staying home and, and doing a commute or, or trying to figure out, I would encourage you to, to dive in with both feet and, and, and just try to make this as, as a ordinary a year at, at the college as you possibly can. Um, I understand that there's financial considerations that have to be taken in, into account, um, but I think, for, especially for your first years that are doing that transition, um, bite the bullet, jump in with both feet, and, and, and enjoy the experience as much as you can. I, I think it'll add to your academic success as well. Also to add, we live in Canada. It's winter. Driving is not always fun. Um, and so I just want to throw that out there. I mean, if you live within a half an hour, sure, awesome. Josie makes that commute a lot and uh, knows what the weather's like, but just to add that one, good point. I jump in too. Um, I want to first of all congratulate the second years because you guys, uh, you got through all this. You know, nobody saw this coming. Nobody saw this coming. And you guys, as second, as first years, took it by the horns and I know nobody was really happy with it, but you still did it and you still got through it and you still made it through. So I, first of all, I want to congratulate second years, but I'm also going to call the second years up a little bit and say, hey, second years, you've been through this, none of us willingly, but you were through it. And so lend your experience to some of these first years coming in because uh, we're all in this together. And so if the second years can say, Hey, you know what? When this happened to me last year and we're going through this, this is what worked for me. But I also want to remind everybody that the student services and the commons and, and all the support services that we have for students, we're still all here. And we're still available through our text. I'm going to hit the enter key because that's where my, um, I'm going to put my chat numbers where, where students can text me about any, any concerns that they have. But at the same time, people, uh, Nothing, nothing as far as we're concerned has changed. We're just really happy that the college is back and it's open. And I can tell you one thing that college when there's no students around is a pretty boring place. So we're really excited for you guys to get here and the supports are still here. Just text us and uh, we'll do whatever we can to give you a hand with this. Great, uh, another really good question here. Will there be group limit numbers when hanging out with friends? So, um, this, this speaks a little bit to, um, to the guidelines, I guess, that Alberta Health Services are putting out there. So when you're in class, when you're in college mandated activities, uh, we'll be dictating uh, what the rules are on that side. I think that it's really important though, um, that you, you also are aware of what 
the precautions you should be taking are according to Alberta Health Services. Uh, so when you're in your private time, obviously we're not going to be we're not going to be moderating that. Um, but you need to be aware of that. Um, the other big point that I would add in here is you also need to respect other students who are there that are wanting to take precautions. And I think that's going to be a really big thing uh, this year. Uh, it's just being considerate to others um, who, if they're social distancing, uh, all of these things in terms of uh, where they want to go out, the peer pressure thing just isn't appropriate um, when we're in a global environment of a pandemic and, and uh, increased uh, limitations. So um, the simple answer is that we're, we're not going to monitor you in your private life. Um, we would recommend that you that you understand the the restrictions put out by Alberta Health Services and that you uh, adhere to them uh, just for your own safety and well-being on that side. Um, let's see. There's very if if is there very limited rooms in residence? Should I be looking for a different place to live? Speaking from an out-of-province student, so um, I think that to Danielle's point, uh, this is a this is really a question for residency. I would encourage everybody to uh, to shore up their accommodations early uh, because uh, there will be reduced capacity. There's no question in, in residence because we're going to single occupancy. Uh, we, there is capacity in town uh, and uh, and surrounding areas that I think uh, it might be uh, available as well. Uh, but uh, if you're looking at residence and you're wanting to go into residence and that's your first option, uh, you need to be speaking to them early uh, because they may fill up. We're not quite sure what that's going to look like. Um, uh, so we're just going to, uh, it's basically a first come first serve thing to my understanding in residence. Um, so it's a good thing to get on really early. Okay, uh, on average, how many students enter the crop technology program a year? Kyle, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I, I guess the last time I looked, I think we we're sitting around 55. We're capped at 66. Um, so that that should break up into three groups. I would expect. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll group these next couple together because they're both kind of relating to Tracy and the chair. So the first one is, is there a way if you're living off campus with someone in your group that you get in-person classes at the same time? Uh, well, that's, maybe you'd let you tackle that one first, and then I'll throw the second one at you. So I, I think that's, again, that'll be something that you'll have to talk to myself or Alan McMillan about um, and kind of explain the situation and, the under, and give us uh, your reasonings for that. Um, I, I think that's, it'll be a case by case basis really is what that, that will look like. We don't know who you're going to be accommodating with. so on the first day of classes or within that first week, if you could just stop by and say, these are the people that I'm living with, um, we're in the same program, is there any way to make sure that we're aligned to be in the same live classes? And I think that should be, should be a doable thing. But yeah, just let us know your first week back. I, I will ask, uh, I think on this one, just I think there needs to be a little bit of patience on this because Tracy's gonna be a busy guy <laughs> coming into the fall. Um, so be just be understanding if this isn't possible that uh, that you're able to understand that just because there is a lot of things happening. Um, so we don't want to get too rough on our chair <laughs> as he's uh, well, it, trying to make and, a lot of adjustments. <laughs> and just to speak to that, Jeff, as well, is, is sometimes those transfers, because of the lab sizes in particular, because when you transfer, it, it's usually the labs that are the issue. Uh, and if a lab is full, it's full. Uh, I, as an academic advisor, I'm not going to overfill one lab. Um, just just because it's more convenient for a student. I mean, if we can make it work, we'll certainly make it work, but there's certainly no guarantee that we're going to be able to do it. Okay, uh, for AHT, actually this could be for any program really. Uh, AHT first year, will our timetable specifically say if our lectures will be in person or online? Um, so Tracy can maybe take this one as well. I think that, um, my understanding of this is going to be up to the instructor how they deliver those courses. So you'll just have time blocked off in my mind. Um, but yeah, I, I think your timetable will be set and it'll just be a matter of uh, if that individual instructor is doing, um, you know, sections uh, or split it up into three groups or how they want to do that, or if they're doing um, 
a pre-recorded PowerPoint or if they're live streaming or whatever that case may be. So your timetables will be set. They'll be the same as everybody else in your program, except for your labs. Your lab groups will be different in AHT and for crops and AST as well. Um, but it will be up to your individual instructor on those, those lectures where you, know, you may have 70 or 80 or 90 people scheduled to be in that class and you'll, you'll just know if, if it's Bevan, for instance, he'll let you know which group you're in and what time you're supposed to be there, if it's Darla or whoever. Uh, so those, those will, that information will come, I would imagine, probably again that first week of classes when we have some numbers finalized and we know how many sections and how many students are there and how we want to run that. So. I think that was probably one of our biggest learnings as we finished off last semester was how important it is to the students to let them know what classes are going to look like. So what, where will you be in person? Where will you be online? And to set those expectations very clearly. So again, that goes back to what Alan was saying, make sure you're on D2L, which is our learning platform. And there's actually a schedule in there so that you'll be able to see, okay, I have, um, if you're lucky enough, accounting with Darla, and I know that I'm in person on this day versus, and, and we'll make sure it's very clear. So those of you struggling a little bit with online learning and worrying about that, tap into the resources that ironically are online right now and, and figure out those, those tips and tricks to really being a successful learner. And again, we're gonna help you with that. So yeah, that's my advice on that as the instructors. And again, I encourage, I don't think that on the very first week we'll have, we'll have our dates set out to the end of the semester, but we could, our, how we're gonna be teaching is gonna be quite fluid for what works best for you and how you're learning. Okay, just tying into that one, there's a question here on uh, tests and exams. Will they be online la like last semester or in classrooms? Uh, this is AHT specific, but we might be able to go around the horn with the program heads on that one as well, just to get a consensus on how exams and, and uh, assessment looks like. Yeah, I think that again will be very much up to the individual instructor. We looked at lots of options like oral exams and uh, written essay type answer exams, one-on-one -on -one meetings. I mean, there's all kinds of scenarios and I think it will be up to the instructor to decide what they think is the best fit for their particular course. Okay, great. So um, maybe any other instructors wanna jump in on that one? I think that's pretty good assessment. It's going to really uh, vary depending on course and then what's being assessed as well. Of course, lab exams uh, may be happening out uh, and in person, so depending on what's being tested. So, Okay, uh, there's a couple interesting questions just on whether the Commons is going to be available 24-7. Uh, Danielle, are st you still in? Do you know what the, or Karen, do you know if, uh, if the Commons is planning on being open all the time? If Karen's still here, I'll let her take that one. Maybe yeah. not. Might have stepped okay. out. So. <laughs> no, the comments is going to be available and accessible. So um, I'm assuming you're meaning the computer labs and such. We understand not everyone has a computer. And as things closed in March, we did work with students who didn't have that to be on campus. So yes, the comments will still be available as well as any learner accessibilities or any exam times please get in touch with us let us know that whether it's um directly through the commons through karen did post her number up in here as well um or talking with alan and just who to reference that and kind of get that stuff going um but yeah nope comments will be available okay sorry i got distracted by questions yeah <laughs> no, that's okay uh, kind of related to that i think this is a big one that uh, probably uh, people are interested in will spurs be open do you know <laughs> and if so will they still be having themed parties uh, i think that this is going to be something that's going to be a major shift obviously because of uh, social distancing rules uh, we're going to have to be very careful with how that goes and i think this actually uh the point about um about will groups be monitored if if you are on college facilities the security uh, will be going around and if there's any anything that is not consistent with uh, the restrictions that we're trying to be under I'm sure that they're going to be uh, enforcing that so and that's really just for the safety and well-being of the students that are, that are here but I think that you're going to see that uh, 
I mean, we're going to be consistent with Alberta Health Services guidelines in terms of gathering size. Um, there may, uh, it's really going to be up to the Students Association is the, the group that'll be putting on most of those parties. So, uh, Darla, have you heard anything on that side? I'm guessing there's nothing, at least for the first semester, I wouldn't think, but maybe they're looking at some yeah, modified it's, activities. It's, yeah, it's very much subject to what Alberta Health Services says they can do. So the SA, the Student Association's committed to ensuring, you know, the students are engaged and get to experience the culture. The student, SPURS is actually a student center, so it happens to turn into a bar a couple nights a week, but it is a student center where, where students can gather and they can go play pool and they can study and they can uh, work on group projects and things. So in terms of it being a gathering space, I know that Carrie and the SA would love that to continue happening. And again, it can only happen if it's appropriately, not policed, but appropriately monitored to ensure that the social distancing. So it's, it's unlikely, unless there was a massive change um, in the COVID response here in Alberta, that there would be any sort of big gathering there at all. Yeah, so I know that the SA is looking. And so again, if you get on the app, the SA will be announcing certain things that they're doing to support students um, in that format. You bet. Okay, so there's some questions here, uh, some common ones on when uh, when they will get their emails, their passwords, uh, access to D2L, and what what is D2L? Uh, D2L is our is our learning uh, platform that we use at Lakeland College. Uh, and Danielle, do you know when, when all that happens? Is that at registration uh, during the online process when all that would happen or can they get it sooner? So the My Lakeland account does get sent out early August. Uh, so that again, just keep your eye on your emails. They'll tell you how to log into that. And then actually I'm not 100% sure on the Lakeland email if that goes with the My Lakeland or if that's something that gets sent to them a little bit later. So I'm gonna have to double check that, hopefully have an answer for Tuesday's webinar. Um, on when those get sent, but the biggest thing is just keep your eye on your emails. The My Lakeland account, when that gets sent in, that's when you're going to log in and do that. Um, and yeah. Okay. I think there are instructions on the Lakeland College website about how to log into your email address. So once you are enrolled, uh, it might even work now. You could give it a try or give it a try a little bit later in August, maybe, and just follow the instructions and, and it should give you access just a google search lakeland college student email yeah you bet uh there's a question here do we need to wear masks while in the commons so uh this is a it's it's a bit of reason the reason why i might be stumbling over a few of these questions about how we're going to handle some of the casual areas uh, at the college um there's actually uh our facilities uh, director and the senior leadership team is going to be getting together uh to actually develop some some protocols around this so some of this is is yet to come uh, just based on the on the guidelines so uh, we will be uh, giving you more information on that as we have it but um, there will definitely be attention paid to how we address some of these uh, areas where students would typically gather between classes and that sort of thing um, I just don't really have a lot of information on that yet because I think a lot of that is uh, has yet to be determined so um, let's see how many students are expected to attend Lakeland Vermilion this year uh, that's really a question mark for us. It's uh, one of the big question marks we have. <laughs> we're, we're not sure. We're hoping that students choose to uh, to come uh, and we're hoping that this uh, maybe sets some minds at ease in terms of, uh, I know that a lot of, it would have been very easy for us to, uh, to commit to a straight online delivery uh, in terms of planning and those sorts of things. I think it makes it very difficult to deliver on the competencies we typically deliver. So uh, one of the big uh, big things we're worried about is that uh, is that we do have a big drop of in, in enrollments. I think that can have some negative effects on the next year. I think everyone, your, your tendency is to always push things off a year and uh, maybe everything will be back to normal. But um, if, if a lot of people do that, it really remains to be seen how many people are going to show up this fall. It also remains to be seen uh, kind of what the bottleneck is going to be uh, the following year as we uh, get through the students that, that took off a year on that side. So. Um, so it's really a big question mark. We're not sure right now. We hope that, that students choose to come and uh, we're doing as much as we can to make that experience uh, as good as we can. So that's really part of the point of this webinar as well is just to assure you that uh, there will be lots of hands on and 
it won't be the same, but it will be as good as we can do under the current current uh, restrictions. Um, okay. Uh, so we've kind of talked about tests. Uh, I'm just wondering about if anyone sees a burning question here I'm missing, just point it out to. Oh, uh, there's one about presentations. Uh, how does that look like, or will it be much like uh, like last spring? Uh, any of the instructors want to answer that question? I, I assume this is talking about SMF presentations, so and and kind of the capstone course presentations. I think that was from Alyssa. So Darla. <laughs> All right. Um, presentations for I mean in classroom presentations we would be doing. There is actually uh, tons of online tools that we can use to do presentations. So we can do them in small groups or in, in larger groups. We'll be accessing that technology. And again, if we have you face-to-face -face in person for those, those classes, we will get you polished on those presentation skills in classes. So does that answer the question? If I can yeah. say about the um, like final presentations, I know they got canceled last year and that was a disappointment for a lot of Students in a missed opportunity. Uh, I think if we're able to be on campus, we'll be able to recreate more, more of that experience, maybe still in the theater, maybe with some you know, live uh, audience and with live streaming as well. So that'll be a lot more realistic to the presentation experience that has been in the past. Okay, there was a question up here. Uh, will there be a way to take a reduced uh, course load uh, so I would I would hand you off to our academic advisor Alan McMillan, uh, as as regular uh, he'll be working individually with students that are looking at a reduced course load. So anything you want to add to that, Alan? Nope. If you're looking at a reduced course load, shoot me uh, an email. My email is right at the very top of the chat. Uh, I'd be more than glad to have a discussion with whoever is pondering that possibility. Sure. Uh, Kim, a really specific one about second year AHT clinic rotation and how that's going to work this year. Yeah, that is definitely going to be a challenge because we did a lot of stuff out in the public, in the schools. So we've been looking at other alternatives of how we can maybe, you know, video chat some presentations into them, do some things like that. Um, but that's something that as a second year, once you get in, those academic advisors that are handling each of those specific groups can provide more detail with that and what they have planned. Great. Uh, a question here from uh, the dairy major. So Bevan, just how much will be online and hands-on for the dairy major? Yeah, so just like all the other ones, your first year is pretty general. There's a couple specific courses, but uh, we'll try to get you in class as much as possible. I would once again echo that all of your labs will be in person. Uh, the majority of your lectures, particularly if you're in the dairy group, so if there's a dairy specific course, they will be small enough that we should be able to get you in, in lecture for all of those. So we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, so I think that, and it probably across the board and, and, and program heads can jump in if I'm speaking on a term, but I think there's a lot of similar questions here on uh, the percentage of online to uh, to face to face. And I think that the answer is going to be there's it'll be tough to to take the programming off campus because you'll be several times. <laughs> you know, I would think daily you'll probably be, probably be uh, heading to one face to face experience, whether it be in one course or the other, uh, several times a week. Um, so. Uh, that's kind of across the board. It's hard to give you an exact number because it's really variable depending on the course and the program. But, um, but I think it'll uh, it'll be significant enough that you'll need to be on campus would be a fair way to put it. Um, okay. Oh, uh, Kim, also a specific one for VMA. Will there be in-person classes for VMA this year, or will the majority be online? Yeah, my intent is to. To, for my specific VMA classes is to run them in person. So if we can fit in a classroom and still abide by all the regulations, then we're gonna go as one class. Otherwise, we're gonna try and go on a rotation and for example, have half the class come 
maybe Monday, Wednesday, and half the class come Tuesday, Thursday, and we would do that live stream for the other half that isn't in person. So everybody has a chance to be there, answer questions, but it it won't um, it won't be exclusively online for sure. Okay. Uh, a question here about whether there's going to be a specific Zoom meeting on specific programs, first year AHT, for example. Uh, there, there won't be this webinar is to serve all of the programs uh, in agriculture sciences, uh, but there will be uh, on the first day orientation, uh, you will be breaking off into your program groups and there'll be more specific information given at that time uh, when, you're on, when you're on campus. So uh, that will be an online orientation, but uh, that'll be a lot more specific information. Um, so I think, uh, is there any other burning questions here I'm missing? A lot of them have the same themes as kind of what we've, uh, what we've already asked, unless I'm missing something here. There is a question about the, the on-campus clubs, such as Stockman's Club. What's the plan for these types of clubs? I think it really depends on, on, uh, on the club and what the activities are, uh, just to reiterate what we said earlier on. Um, so, uh, just stay tuned on that side. If it's if it's something like the Stockman's Club where it's large gatherings and that's the majority of it, I'm guessing there's probably going to be some modified activities that can respect the, uh, the requirements for social distancing and and uh, all the rest of it. So, okay. Well, I think. Um, oh, Janet, you're on. Did you want to talk to Stockman's Club? Have you thought about it at all? <laughs> I'm buried in a Google document, so. Um, I have not thought a lot about it other than to think, okay, we're going to have to do some things differently. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I mean, part of that will be up to the executive. When we get back on campus, we'll have a conversation with the executive. I'll have a conversation with the executive of the Stockman's club and we'll see, um, we'll see, you know, what we can come up with. I would be very, very surprised if we went to Denver though. Um, I just don't think that I'm not even sure that Denver will actually run their stock show um, this year and I'm not convinced that we'll be traveling to the United States by January either so um, I guess we'll kind of wait and see but sorry I don't have a better answer than that sure okay a very specific question for VMA uh, if you have face piercings will you need to take them out <laughs> An excellent question. Um, I would say for some of the things like surgery, for example, you can't have any jewelry in the surgical suite. So yes, those would have to come out. For something like restraint, that's always a risk that those get caught and get pulled out or tear apart. So I would say just as a safety tool, labs for sure, they would have to come out. Okay, great. Uh, Bevan, judging club. I think they're just building on the Stockman's Club. Have you put any thought into how that might go this year or any communications? Yeah, so we generally plan and prepare and practice for agribition, which is generally the middle of November. It's already announced a cancellation. So uh, un unless there's an online uh, judging component to that that they're, they haven't communicated yet, we will be going online with judging club at, to practice, which will open our doors for other practices and getting in clinicians and then once we can get in person we will go from there. Okay and I think that the last time I just gone through just kind of looking for themes the only one we maybe haven't talked about specifically is supply lists for specific program groups. Um, program heads you want to maybe just talk about um, when we're going to be having those out uh, when would be appropriate on that side? In terms of, I, I'm guessing that this is going to be after uh, after our session with facilities and the senior leadership team on on what the requirements are for PPE and that sort of thing. So, the best answer I can give you at this point is probably just to stay stay uh, tuned, and we'll we'll try to uh, put the the uh, supply list out as soon as we can, if there's any modifications to them. I was going to say I did put the current supply list uh, link just up on the chat there and oh, if it changes or anything adds i'm sure it will get updated um but for now there's your current one um just find your program okay great 
So we're at 8.36. So I'm going to do a time check on here. I'm seeing lots of yawns now. And <laughs> we probably don't need to belabor it too much, I think. Is there any other burning questions that, uh, that we haven't addressed? Or uh, faculty, if I've missed something really important, just let me know as well. But we might wrap it up if, uh, if everybody's good with that. I really appreciate the attendance tonight. We're still at 104 <laughs> right now, so that's pretty good for, uh, for what we were hoping. We're really glad that you stopped uh, by with us tonight. We're hoping you make the choice to come to Lakeland and we actually get to meet you in person. Um, so maybe we'll wrap it up with, with that if that's okay. So um, uh, anything, anyone, the faculty, anyone want to, any parting messages on the way out? No? Okay. Well, thanks for attending. Uh, we'll see everybody in, at the end of August. And uh, if you have any other questions, please feel free to talk to Alan McMillan is probably your best point of contact for anything program related, uh, residents or, um, you know, everything else really that maybe doesn't directly relate to your program. Danielle's a great contact uh, on that side. But just contact somebody so we can get you in touch with the right person if you're having any questions. So. Okay, thanks everyone. We'll see everybody in August. Good night. Good night. <laughs>